In this video, I'm going to give you a quick snapshot of the regulation of gene expression. And we should start with a quick explanation of the difference between turning a gene on and expressing a gene. Because when a gene is turned on, that means only that the gene is transcribed. It means you're going to transcribe the gene. But when a gene is expressed, it means much more than that. When a gene is expressed, it means you produce a final folded functional form of a gene product. Now what do we mean by gene product? There are in fact many different types of gene products. One of the most famous are the proteins. A protein sequence of amino acids is encoded by a gene and so Translating a protein means you're creating a gene product. But proteins are made from messenger RNAs, another gene product. And there's a little mRNA with poly A tail. And in addition to proteins and messenger RNAs, many gene products are made as RNAs. They are functional RNAs that perform their functions in cells as RNAs, and certainly the ribosomal RNAs are an example of that. So are the transfer RNAs that transfer amino acids into ribosomes. But then there are, class, there are whole classes of small RNAs, like small interfering RNAs and microRNAs, that also perform roles as RNA in cells. So Expressing a gene means producing a final folded functional gene product. And that happens at six different levels. There are six levels of gene expression regulation. And by controlling those, by controlling gene expression at six levels, you turn the genes on that you want just at the time that you want them. And these same six levels of gene expression regulation are true for, for plants, like, like this grass here, and for animals, like this, this deer here. There we go, there's some, a couple of antlers. And for this, for this toadstool, for this mushroom right there. Doesn't matter the form of life, gene expression is regulated at the six, same six levels to turn the genes on that cells need at the time that they're needed. And these six levels happen in two different places in cells. Three of those levels of gene expression regulation happen in the nucleus. So I'm going to put a nucleus here. And three of the levels happen in the cytoplasm. So we're going to separate our nucleus from our cytoplasm with a with a double membrane nuclear envelope and we'll surround our cytoplasm with a plasma membrane here and we'll start off with the three levels of gene expression regulation that happen in the nucleus and the first one is this one turning the gene on so the first level of gene expression regulation is transcription and transcription starts on the DNA. So there's a little bit of DNA and here's a gene transcription start site and along comes RNA polymerase and RNA polymerase is transcribing this RNA molecule and here's another RNA polymerase it's gotten a little bit further along and so its transcript is to there and as soon as the transcript appears in the cytoplasm it gets some chemical modifications there. The first one is the 5 prime methyl cap. I draw it as a little baseball cap. And now, and the second happens after the polymerase falls off and it releases its transcript. This one's gotten all the way to the end of the gene. Second is the 3 prime poly A tail. And now with this RNA transcribed off of the DNA, we are ready for the second level of 
gene expression regulation, and that is RNA processing. And RNA processing happens to this molecule. It's called the primary transcript. Called that because it is the first transcript off of the DNA, and it needs to be modified. It gets a 5 prime methyl cap, it gets a poly A tail, but then it also has the regions intervening between its expressed regions spliced out. RNA processing is also referred to as splicing. And here we have, we've removed, we're, we're looping out that intervening region, that's so-called intron, to link these two expressed regions, the so-called exons, together. And once that intron is spliced out, we have our final processed RNA molecule, and this is referred to as a mature mRNA. And we're ready for the third level of gene expression regulation, and that is nuclear export. Because even if a gene is on and it is transcribed and then processed, it might be held back in the nucleus and not allowed to get out into the cytoplasm. Holding it back from getting to the cytoplasm means you hold it back from meeting the ribosomes and being translated, so you can't express it if it's held in the nucleus. So if the RNA is allowed to pass through the nuclear envelope and into the cytoplasm, then it's subject to the fourth level of gene expression regulation, RNA longevity. Now longevity means lifespan. And some RNAs meet up with compounds in the cytoplasm, such as the small interfering RNAs, that can bind them and target them for destruction. So if an RNA is destroyed before it can meet a ribosome and be translated, no gene expression. But if you do get to the cytoplasm and you survive the small interfering RNAs, now you're subject to the fifth level of gene expression regulation, and that is translation. Now translation involves binding a ribosome and translating the product making the final protein by reading the expressed regions of the mRNA. And translation can be slowed by microRNAs or blocked entirely. Assuming this protein is finally translated, ribosomes are binding to it, synthesizing protein off of the code in the messenger RNA. And here we have a ribosome that's gotten to the end of the translated region, Subunits have come apart, protein has come off, and it has folded into its final folded form. There's a final folded form of the protein. Now, for some proteins, that's it. It's made it. It's a functional gene product. And we say that that protein is expressed and its gene is expressed. There we have the happy glow lines that say that that protein is expressed. But there is one other level of protein expression regulation, and that is for proteins that need to be modified before they are final folded functional gene products. That's the sixth level of gene expression regulation, and it's called post-translational modification. Because some proteins, even once they are transcribed and processed and exported and they survive and they're translated, they still need to perhaps pair up with their neighbors in order to be functional. Or perhaps they have to have a chemical modification like a phosphate group attached to them. This is called phosphorylation. Some proteins have to be phosphorylated before, they're final, before they are finally functional. But in all these cases, now we have our final folded functional form, either assembled or modified, and we say our gene is expressed. So there you go. There's a quick overview of the six levels of the regulation of gene expression that are used by all forms of life on Earth.